the workbench. It's here. If you want to see how my dad and I built this thing, that video is over on Gearling Engineering. In this video, I wanted to talk about putting together the ideal workspace for electronics and small computer work. Now, most people who use computers these days don't need to solder. They don't need a scope, they aren't debugging circuits, and sadly, when something dies, it's either tossed in the garbage or put away in a drawer. It wasn't always that way, and using some of these tools, even the most anti-consumer devices could still be repaired. But this workbench will hopefully be the site of some amazing rescues, and probably, especially if Redshirt Jeff gets in here, the most frequent place you'll see magic smoke, that mysterious substance that keeps our devices going. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'll talk about how they're helping me build a new merch website later, but right in the middle of ordering this new multimeter, I got an email from a company called Isotip. Now, most people haven't heard of them. In, in fact, I think they were spun off from Wall Clippers, the company that makes haircutting clippers. Way back in the 1970s, Wall decided to make the first cordless rechargeable soldering iron. And wouldn't you know, this orange version was the soldering iron I learned to solder on as a kid. A little unconventional, but that's what you get when you have a dad who's a radio engineer. I decided to have him come by and asked if he'd bring this iron over to compare it to a brand new Isotip 7700 they sent me. So Isotip actually emailed me a week or two ago and just out of the blue said, hey, I, we saw you made a new electronics workbench. We want our soldering iron on, and it's soldering to all you UK people. That's what we say <laughs> in America. But I, I thought it was awesome because this was the first soldering iron I learned on. I remember doing a lot of little projects with this. Mm -hmm. And when I, noticed, when, when I realized people don't use wireless soldering irons, I was like, oh, that was so handy though. Because yeah. like you just walk up and grab it and you use it. This is like seven dust years old. You can see the uh, <laughs> yeah, dust there. Uh, quite a bit of dust. But because the battery died many years ago and I did not even ponder uh, getting that recharge. We came out, but butane is another one you can throw in a case. This one you really can't throw in a case unless the case includes the nice space for that because it, it'll break uh, yeah. the tip and stuff. Tip but, can come off. but these are great, it's, keep them on the bench. When you got jobs, we used to have a lot more soldering jobs. Going somewhere and it's easier to take this with you, go in with a little solder and do a quick fix on a connector or something that you're uh, you're working on. So, that, but I got one that's, that's had to be 20, 30 years. I don't know. What I thought was really interesting is if you look at this, like, take this thing. This is this is the model 7700. <laughs> this was probably from the yeah. 90s, yeah. maybe the 80s. Yeah. Like the molding is the same. The light is the same. It's still incandescent, although the style of it is a little different. Even the charging, I think it's just a transformer in there. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't yeah. changed anything. Yep. But I think I, there are a couple improvements they could make, especially having a little charging indicator. Mm -hmm. But uh, yep. but it's like, if, if the design works, why change it? You get multiple tips. I'm sure they still sell multiple they, tip Yeah, they sizes. have tons of tips. The thing yeah. I liked too is you set it down and it's not going to burn anything because mm -hmm. it's off your desk. Right. So just a, a lot of neat little things. And the light. Like I noticed, I, was, I, I think I saw Big Clive on YouTube had a video on it. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned like, most soldering irons don't have lights. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that, they used to. A lot of them used to. Well, the soldering irons, yeah, the the guns and everything had lights. Yeah, but this was unique in that too. That yeah, well, it, it still nice is. Light. So mm -hmm. I have I have a pine okay. sole. This is one of the the latest it's and nice. greatest. Yep. It's nice because like that one, it has a screw on it. You're meant to take it apart, fix mm -hmm. it, change the tips, do whatever, and it mm -hmm. has hackable firmware. Mm -hmm. which is a little weird to have firmware in a soldering iron. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but it, it's powered by USB-C or a barrel plug, but it doesn't have a light. Like that, mm -hmm. like you could put a little, little LED, LED there, right you there. know? Yep. So, yep. and then also I have a, a Heiko or a Hako mm -hmm. FX901. I used this on the Mr. Beast set, yep. uh, but it has, you know, the, the double A's. Mm -hmm. But this is a little, this one's a little more awkward to use. It's, uh, it's handy in a pinch. And it, mm -hmm. I like that it uses the double A's because you find mm -hmm. those anywhere. Yep. But again, no light. Like, yeah, no light. Anyway, I, I, I just thought it was cool. Yeah, it it's, is. I'm, I'm marking this video sponsored because they sent these to me for free mm -hmm. to, to have on mm -hmm. the desk. Yep. But I wouldn't have, I don't normally accept those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But because of the history with this, and you had mm -hmm. another one, I think, didn't you? This even has your initials on it. Look at <laughs> that. No initials. Well, they are yours as well. <laughs> That's neat to see. And the new one has. Oh, uh, yeah, this, this one has uh, lithi Lifepo, lithium phosphate mm -hmm. whatever yeah but it's you know the same same style and everything mm -hmm. it does have a couple little upgrades i think uh the the charging base has an led on the plug mm -hmm. not on the base 
but it turns red when you're, when you're charging it mm -hmm. and then green when it's done. Mm -hmm. And I think that the transformer stays going forever, so this thing, if you leave it plugged in forever, it'll get hot. For somebody with lithium-ion batteries, you're like, oh, I don't like that getting so hot, <laughs> but I guess the battery in here, it's not as bad. But Yeah, yeah. So you take it in, you pull it out when it's charged. If you want, flip it over, it stays yep. right there. Soldering over the years has changed for, at least for the broadcast engineers. We mm -hmm. did a lot of punching. We did a lot of pre Now we buy a lot of pre-made, and we make our... Uh, Audio travels on Ethernet cables, so mm -hmm. XLRs are less. Everything used is digital now. Yeah, that's a a lot of change. Yeah, so. but not a lot of change. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Like I wish more companies would just take a good product and just keep making it. Isotip could have rubberized the grip to make it look cool. They could have put in a non-replaceable LED, or they could have made a dumb app for it with a subscription service. But they didn't. This thing has a few warts, but if it's reliable, it's supported for literal decades, and the company even encourages you to buy a new battery instead of trashing it and buying another one, I can get behind that. This isn't a sexy soldering iron, but I know this thing will last until I'm retired, and I can't say that about most things I buy nowadays. It was just kind of crazy that Isotip reached out right as we finished up the workbench, but that's electronics for you. I think for most hardware hackers, if you go back to when you started, there's probably a tool or some piece of kit that really drew you in. For me, it was that soldering iron. My dad had a black one too, but there was something about a cordless orange soldering iron that really did it for me. Maybe it was also the leaded solder, I'm sure that I breathed in a little too much, but between that, my dad's old oscilloscope, and all his other gear, I was hooked. But you can see behind me, the bench is already starting to fill up. I figure now's as good a time as any to walk through things. Hmm. So these things are things that I chose for the workbench so far. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't nice. choose that. I have a story about that. But, yeah. uh, but I, I chose all these other bits and pieces. Right. Can you explain the purpose of having these particular tools at a workbench? Yeah, the, 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 this group here is huge, right? You got an oscilloscope to see waveforms, right? You want to see this stuff. Uh, you got something to produce or generate uh, power. Uh, and this one is great because it has three different sources. So something to generate power and something to measure the voltages, and you can measure current with that too. But so you've got the basic tools here for uh, a lot of the troubleshooting build, uh, watching the data flow, whatever you want to do. You've got these three boxes doing a lot of that. Probably the next thing up would be this uh, generator of uh, waveforms. So you could actually make square waves and certain frequencies and triangle waves and whatever else you wanted to do to test. That'd be the, the next piece I would add as a is a broadcast I, I know a lot, of, a lot of different uh, workbenches, you see just equipment stacked up high. Yeah, well, it's so like when you see, when guys set up a bench, like the ham guys who I've been watching a lot more of lately, uh, when they set up a bench, it's like troubleshoot, fix, maintain, and it's a station, it's a, it's a broadcast station. So they have equipment for measuring forward reflected power and impedances and things like that. Uh, so, but for your general electronics things, you've got a lot of the stuff covered here. And you can probably never have enough little uh, tools for holding things while you're working on them or testing, soldering. Those are you know, people. And then your wire here, you got your different wire sizes. I probably have uh, 12 boxes of wire <laughs> and above mine, but it's on a shelf next to it, but handy, uh, depending on what type of wire you're looking to use. And then again, it, it, the workbench is oriented toward fixing things with a lot of power, like a transmitter. You wouldn't necessarily have an RV power connector but you're gonna have some kind of power there to, to help you pull separate power so you don't pop your breaker on your bench if you're gonna test like transmitters and things like that. So I love this too, look at that. I like that air duster. You can't uh, yeah. get rid of enough dust. I still have, I still so, have another can left, but uh, the cans are a lot less useful once you have yeah. a powered. They go out so fast, they just become empty. <laughs> yeah, but they you get know, freezing the, cold. The thing that's interesting is uh, most of the time, uh, I would take something outside to use this electric duster on it because it's got enough dust to be concerned about it. But a lot of times you just get a little bit of stuff out of your way and it's not a big deal, but that all goes somewhere, right? <laughs> Don't want it in the lungs as much as on the floor and vacuum it up, but yeah. uh, it's a, it's a deal. Yeah, what, what about like safety? I know with, with soldering, you're having fumes and I have some leaded solder up mm. there and things like that. What do you do for that? Because right now, all I have is this little cheap fan that has a filter on the back of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and since a lot of engineers used to smoke, I don't think it's ever been that big of a deal. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. The old school engineers. <laughs> yeah, lead really solder, fumes going on. A lot of times we couldn't decide where we were soldering. Like if you're underneath of a, a air studio that's on the air and you got to resolder some headphone jacks or something, you really can't bring that to the bench. But uh, trying to avoid the breathing of the air, it is a deal. So having a fan is great. 
Uh, we always, you know, def, you know, tried to have the air go up and the head <laughs> not above it. Okay, I'm, not, thinking, I'm thinking about putting in, they make uh, units that sit on the floor with a tube that comes up. Mm -hmm. You can position it wherever you want and then mm -hmm. it sucks the... So if you did blow this out or to have a bench area where you did draw the air out and you filtered it, uh, that's like uh, the nirvana. That's the greatest. So mm -hmm. We've already gotten some great suggestions in the comments on Gearling Engineering, but I'll keep adding to the workbench, probably starting with a proper fume extractor. I also added this overhead amaranth light. I wanted a nice soft light for video, and the F21X was suggested by Patrick from Serve the Home. It's light enough I can clip it into the ceiling grid and not worry that it'll fall on me. But after installing it, I realized I still want more light, so I'll probably make some LED strips to mount under these shelves. I also put an Ergotron monitor arm on the side, and it'll be handy to have a full PC running over here. It'll be helpful for looking up repair guides and probably some radio stuff too. Another thing that's come in handy is this new mug. It's just one of the new things I'm prepping for my new merch store, Red Shirt Jeff. The old company I used was really going downhill in terms of shirt quality, and the merch site's been annoying to customize, so I'm redoing everything. Squarespace isn't printing shirts, but they've been a great choice for my new merch site. It was easy to get started with one of their site templates, and I can still customize things down to the CSS when I need to. Besides the easy site building tools, they have flexible payment and shipping integrations, a guided design system called Blueprint, AI tools, and they're just a great solution if you just want to run a website without much hassle. It's been a month since I started working on the new store, but that's been mostly on the shirt and design side. I've only had to spend a couple hours total on the site setup, and it's already looking pretty good. I'm almost ready to launch the new store, but if you want to get started on your own new store or website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash redshirtjeff to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So we built this workbench over on the Gearling Engineering channel, and you should go check out that video because we talk a little bit about the structure of it, you know, things that we like, and why this workbench is here, and also an explanation for the name tag that's over on the corner mm -hmm. there. Uh, but one thing that we might start doing over on the Gearling Engineering channel is a little segment where Dad brings out some things that are weird or wild or just old and strange. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to try to guess what it is, and you can try guessing what it is, too. You brought a whole box full of I did of bring a whole goodies. box. Yeah, yeah. Is there, so we're going to grab something out of there and see if we can... Yeah, grab something. Here's, and here's one. Let me, let me take a look at it and see what I... First read it. Yeah. It's so this a says, carrier for traverse rods. I don't know what a traverse rod that is. That means I reused a box that used to be <laughs> something related to drapes or something. So uh, this is very odd. There's a, this, is this one of those puzzles where you're supposed to figure out yeah, how to get it out? Yeah, you gotta figure out how to open it up and well, if you can't, you don't get hired as a technical <laughs> junior engineer, so. I did engineering, that was my first job out of high school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I didn't do any of this. Yeah. There's a, is that like a laser point? No. Uh, you can see things. Well, that's mm. interesting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I can see. Oh, it's like a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's interesting. It says 50. Oh, 50 times. Yep. And then this guy is missing a part. So uh, I don't know where that is. I haven't found it. But this guy has a little holder, a little stand. Yeah. So these things were all tied together for one purpose. It doesn't look like there's any purpose to it. But, yeah. Uh, there is a purpose. <laughs> I still don't understand Maybe this. not anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I, would, uh, I would say, so if you look at these, the one thing you know you need to do is you need to clean your needle on your record player. <laughs> you inspect it with your mirror, and then you weigh the weight. This is a balance rod. How many grams? See that? You can see the markings here. So the little device you balance it on tells you how much, how much weight you are applying to the record. And this is a microscope inspector for the needle. It has a little bit of a cut gauge there, so you can just stick the needle on there and look at it and do an inspection. So vinyl is actually getting very popular these days. Are these, is this a little kit that most, most uh, hipsters need to have? They, they should have it to check the, all that stuff out, you know. <laughs> when you got guys playing, uh, you know, 100 records a day, you know, it makes a difference on, you know, when do you replace a $25 so, needle. You but know, so. I, when I started, you guys had eight tracks. And, we, uh, well, well, not in a cart, eight, cart yeah, machines. We'd call them carts, but, but they were like uh, the eight tracks only. Yeah. They were stereo. So did you have records when you started out? Uh, when I started, there was records. There were records and reel-to-reel and -reel -reel tapes were the main way audio was delivered on the stations when I was there. And the records were, uh, it, it was it was fun. You used to try to speed up the, the uh, records a little bit because <laughs> then you sounded like you had a little you more the pop fast. in now, your music. Nowadays you over-modulate a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you, you do little yeah. tweaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this, you should actually know this guy. This is a... 
This was one of our early happy things when uh, I, I see that. I do, I do remember this actually. You, this was, I think you had the G4. Mm -hmm. It was either G4 or G5. Yep. It says FireWire on it, audio out, video out, and video in, right? Yeah, so video inputs. Mm -hmm. And you did a lot of uh, transcoding yes. old yep. VHS tapes. A lot of that and a lot of uh, video taken from the cameras at uh. the time. You know, you could take a camera out in the field uh, and you could get that super S video in there, not just the regular. I, I do composite. remember S video was so amazing because it was so clear. So compared clear to the compared other. to the other. Yeah, you play <laughs> your uh, what is a video game that had the output for that too. So yeah, so you've got you know the the FireWire thing was the big thing. You could do yeah. whatever. You remember what that spec was? I E thirteen ninety four. But and what it's was the speed on, on the oh, thing? Oh, four hundred megabits. Four hundred megabits, which you was get faster out. than Ethernet. It's back then. Uh, it's hard to keep up with everything there. Yeah. So yeah, this was the device. To, we, I, I ingested a lot of video uh, with this device into the, our computer world back when. Some that of those probably that show. probably would work with the G four up in the front too. The, yeah, the it might. Corner. We have to take that and try it. This is my favorite cables. You want to do a cable? Yeah. Do a cable thing. So I got a bag of cables that, and just in case I need them someday, <laughs> like for a son who has really old computers in his uh, lobby. Yeah. Um, but these cables, uh, you can see. Yeah. The different ends. These look like SCSI, the DB25, yeah. and the uh, C, I forget what the name of that is on the other end. But uh, yeah. these look like a bunch of SCSI cables. Yeah, and, and a SCSI. A Terminator. Yeah, yeah, and a Terminator. So I, this was like right in the heart of when I was doing computing was SCSI was like the fast Yeah, Yeah, fastest, well, fast way to get data the moving Mac on hard two, drives. The Mac 2, the, you know, the, that era of Mac was when I started getting into computing. And so I, yeah. I did a lot with SCSI. We had a yeah. SCSI scanner. We had a, I yeah. think we had a SCSI printer at one you, point. You can daisy chain. And mm -hmm. so at the end, you wanted to terminate if you do it right. You know, if you did it right, if it wasn't an internal in, uh, Terminator for SCSI, you had yep. Put one on. So. Yep. Yeah, it was that was in the days of IRQs and uh, everything that you put into a computer to have to like set the pins the right way on it. Yeah. And Imagine how fast you could get data to throw through that fat of a cable now. <laughs> 25 like... pins. <laughs> if you want to see more of that kind of thing, check out Gearling Engineering. I will link to the video on building the workbench, and mm -hmm. uh, we have some other great video stuff coming up too. All right. So oh, they... I need to stop recording. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should do that too.